let's go to Ukraine, Bonnie. That does sound good. It is very, very, very tumultuous situation, no matter which way you look at it. Yes. And, um, you know, speak, speaking of Ukraine yeah. and um, this, we know that Zelensky came in to the United States here. And, uh, of course, I think the biggest problem that we have that we're facing right now, Bonnie, is the fact that we are dealing with, um, you know, as we speak right now, we we are we know that we are dealing with situation of the Patriot battle being battery being sent over into that uh, that war region there. And Russia has already said that if the U.S. did that, it would become basically open season. Uh, right. You know, on on the Patriot, no matter where it is, uh, Poland. And this Poland is the is missile where we're system putting, that Russia has said uh, is a red line. Don't yes. put the Patriot defense missile systems into Ukraine. Is it can it could also be used offensively? Is that that's correct, isn't it? Well, yes, and that's that's the whole thing too, Bonnie. Is that when we're dealing with this, we are looking at the fact that. Uh, um, uh, that and I'm actually trying to pull up some more information about this as well as we speak here, but we're we're dealing with you know yes it can shoot down uh, Russia's missiles that are coming in but but that that's limited though really uh, when I say limited the reason why I say that's limited is because okay yes it could shoot down a lot of the cruise missiles that are coming in but Russia also has been updating some of their missile systems and as a result of that uh, those you know those missile systems they have a new propulsion system on them just like the ones in the submarines have a new propulsion system and even though they're not uh, supersonic they're still very very powerful systems and as a result of that um, you know the, pa the Patriot battery is not going to do anything about it and then here comes the other issue. Now, those that remember what happened over in Saudi Arabia, if you remember, we had the Patriot battery system there when Iran was launching missiles. Uh, they, they've done it from the Houthi rebels. They've done it from, uh, from, uh, from Iraq. And, but it was always Iranian technology and what they were doing is they were actually uh, firing in missiles that we could not stop with the with the Patriot system. Now, President Trump went on the record as to say, well, as the Saudis don't know how to operate the equipment properly. That was a deflection. All right. So I'm going to give you another case in point, And then we're going to discuss where the issues are right now. Uh, with the battery system going into Ukraine, or what could potentially happen. But the next thing we know, uh, the the Israelis, and of course they blame it on the United States, uh, taking out General Sol uh, Soleimani, the Iranian general, in a an attack that a good friend of mine in Mossad had sent me the pictures of the actual attack itself, uh, and it was all Israelis, that were there on the scene after Soleimani was killed, but they they wanted the U.S. to be the one to take the punch on the cheek, so to speak, or the chin, uh, make it look like they were the ones that actually were were the ones that uh, had um, uh, shot or ordered the the death of Soleimani. And the reason that was Bonnie was because uh, Israel couldn't take the blame at, without being there being a, a, a greater risk, uh, uh, you know, uh, of retaliation. So, so we did, we took the, we took the blame for Israel knowing that it was actually the United States that did this. And then of course, uh, uh, you know, the rest is history. You know, the, the, the Iranians, then they decided they were going to retaliate. And when they decided to retaliate against the United States for, that attack, uh, they actually, they warned the United States, not directly, but what they did is they called up the Saudis, excuse me, the, the Iraqi leadership, 
and they let them know that they were about to launch missiles on the U.S. base there inside of Iraq, inside of the green zone there. That gave us time to get our troops inside of the uh, inside of the barracks. Now, what's interesting about that, Bonnie, is the fact that they warned us for one. They give us a chance to get our people out of harm's way, and all the while, Soleimani, he didn't get any kind of warning. He just got killed. But why would they do that? Well, they would do that is because they knew that the Americans were not the ones that actually killed Soleimani in the first place. That's the first issue you got to have to look at. Secondly, when it comes to this, too, uh, we had Patriot battery systems there, but when the missiles came in, we couldn't stop them. And their bombs hit, and even though we had all our men in a safe place, they were such powerful bombs that we ended up with a lot of soldiers with major concussions and everything else as a result of that. So this caused a lot of problems for us. And, of course, what they never wanted to tell you is why could the Iraqis launch these strikes and not be shot down? They, we've not been able to shoot a single missile from Iraq down, whether it be in Saudi Arabia, Iraq, or in even Israel, when the Demona nuclear power plant had what they called a stray missile from the Iranians out of Syria hit near the Demona power plant. Uh, Israel said they retaliated, but they said, oh, it was just a stray missile. But in reality, it was not. They could not detect the missile because they were using the cloaking technology, which comes from the Philadelphia experiment back in 1943, I believe it is. Uh, we were using that cloaking technology, or excuse me, the Iranians were using it because the Chinese gave it to them. We have that technology. Russia has that technology. And so basically what they can do is they can fire a missile that goes to another dimension. So it's not trackable or traceable and then reappears just before hitting its target. And with that being said, and Russia, we know, has that technology, then what's going to happen when Ukraine puts that battery over in there and then Russia decides, okay, you decided to put the, you know, the Patriot system here for Ukraine. Now what we're going to do is we're going to show you that we have the ability to keep you from being able to hit our missiles in the first place. That's, that's, that, that's very concerning. I mean, not only is uh, um, the fact that they have missiles uh, that go above our atmosphere and then come down uh, and we can't detect them, not, and besides the fact that they've turned off our northern radar so we can't see over the horizon, but now they can cloak them too so you don't know it till it's in front of you? That's exactly right. And literally, you know, the Philadelphia experiment, you know, they made what, three movies out of that, Bonnie? I don't know. I'm not I'm not up on movies, although it sounds like an interesting one to watch. They're they're older movies. Uh-huh. Of course, the Philadelphia ex experiment, I believe, happened in nineteen forty three. Uh-huh. And this is where the US government using uh um Oh, gosh, what do you call it? Uh, the high magnetic energy. There were certain sailors from the U.S. Navy that agreed to, to, to be a part of the experiment where they wanted to see if they could cause the ship to be moved from one location to another. And the, even the movies, they do depict this. And then when they brought the ship back, what happened, in the, and you see it in, the, in some of the movies and stuff, the sailors, some of the sailors were literally part of the ship. They, in other words, when they, when they rematerialized back in our dimension, somehow or another, their bodies had moved. And when the ship rematerialized, then, um, then we ended up with a, with, with a major problem as a result. And uh, so... You know, this become, uh, you know, and, and I guess a lot of people just didn't believe it, Bonnie. They didn't believe that any of that could actually happen. And, uh, but the fact was, it did happen. And then the, 
You know, I actually asked about that case, too, because I really was curious. I knew that there were some people said, no, that's just fiction. It never happened. It's all it's all bogus. So I, I inquired in, a, in one of the meetings I was in. I asked about the, the case on the Philadelphia experiment. I said, I said, was the experiment true? And of course, the answer was yes. And I said, uh, what about, though, I said, you know, you see the depictions that, you know, some of these people were fused into the ship itself, come back and they're screaming, et cetera, things like that. I said, was that true? And the answer was yes. Uh, I said, what in the world did the military do? They said, we, unfortunately, we had to kill the people that were fused into the ship. And I said, but what happened to the rest of the sailors? The ones that came back, they were not infused in the ship. They said, I was told that every single participant had completely lost their minds. And the ones understand. that survived were put into a facility. I, I don't understand. They were fused to the ship? Yeah, like, for example, let's say you were standing on the deck of the ship, but when the ship reappeared uh, back at the port where they originally started the experiment, uh, you were now half of you was under the deck and the other half was above the deck and all the ship's metal was now going through the middle of your abdomen, so to speak. Uh, or you may have been standing there with your hand on, 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 on part of the rail and you come back and now the rail is running right through your arm, uh, rather than, uh, uh, you know, it was just, it was the craziest thing you could ever imagine. Yeah, well, no wonder they lost their minds. Well, the the reason, here's the thing, the reason why they lost their minds, though, and that was the high ma high frequency of uh, uh, magnetics. And uh, that basically scrambles the brains when you get too much of it. So what, what, that's what happened on that Is it the MMA. 5G kind of electromagnetic? Is it the 5G kind? Well, the way that that was described to me is when we talk about our own magnetic, magnetic, magnet, get my words right here, Bonnie, uh, the magnetosphere that we have, when that actually collapses, the it will cause the that high frequency that is above the Earth that can literally deflect uh, asteroids and things like that. Most of the debris doesn't come into the Earth is because of our magnetosphere, and but when that collapses, they say that that then that high uh, uh, magnetism now is traveling on the ground level, except where there's areas where there's high iron concentration. But as a result, though, they said that it could literally fry the human brain uh, with such high magnetic frequencies traveling along the ground. This is why they recommend that you have like an EMF hat or EMF or, or, or a, uh, uh, what do they call it, a Faraday cage, like uh, a room, even a metal building for example, would make a great Faraday cage because if you know that this system, you, well, let me put it this way. They say you can handle it for a short period of time, but anything that's any duration, any longer period of time, the human body can't handle it. They said you begin to start feeling like you're having flu-like symptoms, and then the next thing you know, you're like a vegetable. Hmm. Uh, now, whether or not that's, I, I, I never was told as far as how long would that take to happen. Is it hours or or would it take a couple of days? Uh, that was never explained to me as far as the length of time. Um, but that's part of the dangers of the magnetosphere uh, being too close to the ground. And uh, so, but but the, going back to the part about Iran and their technology, that's what they do too. They were they 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 did perfect the technology um, to where they can safely launch some missile cause that missile to disappear from what you can see or radars can see and then reappear in re-enter into this dimension and strike the target and uh and the only people that have that technology are china russia and the united states and of course iran has it now so this is going to be the the, the issue and uh, now and, uh, and and you know i think we talked about last week that russia basically is trying to, uh, excuse me, not Russia, but the United States, NATO, they are trying to force Russia to attack the United States. Uh, that was reiterated to me once again, uh, just before having to come down here to Florida to take care of things here, 
that was being reiterated again to me that uh, um, that and actually not even from that's what I was actually pulling up, Bonnie. Not even from um, the people that I work work with in Washington, but I was getting this from a FEMA friend. Whoop! I just turned off. That. Let me pull that back up there. Um, and uh, it was saying the exact same thing that uh, that Russia is being pushed into a corner in order to bring about a third world war. They want Russia to strike the United States. Right. Does, does, <clears throat> I think they both want the destruction. If you look at the Deagle, you know, I have a map of the Deagle, um, uh, which is from, I, I understand, the uh, CIA. Uh, and it is a prognostication of the net gain or loss of, of a country on many, many points, including um, population, military strength, uh, all of these points. Well, they uh, have, pro, uh, have opined that in 2025, the whole Western world will lose horrendous amounts of population up to uh, 60, 65, 70 percent of their population. Well, that's interesting you said that. I just found the very part that was sent to me from a FEMA engineer. Um, and what he says here, he says, uh, he's actually talking about what Mike from around the world said, but he said, just said that there's going to be a mass death event next year due to the USA declaration of war with Russia. He said, Putin will hit the USA, Germany, and Great Britain. The event will occur early in the morning. And also, uh, he was saying that the military and the Pentagon is fighting uh, internally because many do not want to support Ukraine anymore. And he said, people in high places are going to openly back away from Ukraine. Uh, now, I can attest to what he's saying is true because these are some of the same things that I've been hearing as well. Yeah. Um, now, he also believes that uh, there's going to be powerful radiation wave caused by Planet X. The max, uh, the impact of asteroids he's talking about will devastate. The storms will cause massive earthquakes, etc. Um, I've not been talking much about the asteroids and things like that lately, Bonnie, because it just really causes so much anxiety for people. Uh, but yeah. we have been impacted here more recently by some fairly large uh, uh, debris. And, you know, and, and it is, we're, we're getting it more frequently now. And, uh, and it's, it's anticipated to only get worse going into 2023. But, uh, you know, that's just one of those things where, that's one reason why I kind of steer away, away from it a little bit, because it doesn't really matter if you say it or not. Don't say it. If it's going to happen, it's going to happen. You can't do anything to stop it. No way. And how are you going to really know where it's going to hit in the first place? That's right. And Revelation promises a safe place for God's people at the appropriate time. So, you know, exactly. I, I don't even worry about it. I don't. Yep. Same, same here. You know, I mean, uh, I mean, let's say, for example, though, you know, you got a big hurricane coming or something like that or... Even this, this winter blast that we had, uh, I knew about this two weeks before it was coming. And, uh, you know, and I mentioned it. I didn't go into a lot of detail. I said, you know, but, you know, uh, I'd said it. Mike said it as well, uh, you know, just from the intel. And it was mainly because the sun is putting out, and I think we mentioned this last week too, putting out a lot of unusual energy. That energy, though, is a result of the... Um, outer bands of the binary system of planet X uh, that's affecting our sun. And as a result, those effects are going to have catastrophic effect on our weather, on our, um, on the, on the earthquakes, the volcanoes, all those things there are going to increase. It's only going to get worse over time. And, uh, and and for the next, basically what I've been told, the next three years, uh, we can anticipate 
some very, very rough, rocky roads ahead. Yes. Um, we're just not going to get around it. That's that's what's coming. That's what's going to happen. Yeah. And, do, you, um, do you ever look on YouTube at Mr. MBBB? <laughs> yes, I do. Did you I see sure the do. picture? Uh, it was on, the, I don't know, it was uh, upload two pictures, one from Iceland and one from uh, Florida, I think. Uh, definitely there was a sphere there. Uh, every once in a while, as this, uh, well, failed star and its, you know, I don't know, between five and seven planets, you catch, you can catch them as they come by. Um, and anyway, there was now one today. It, 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 there's definitely something there. There, there is, and. We do know that there is an object that looks pretty much like a planet behind the sun. And, Bonnie, I'll tell you something. That is um, um, clearly, without a doubt, that is uh, what, what people are seeing is, I, th I think it is planet X. Yes, I think uh, so. I mean, and the it, reason why I say it was studied in the '90s by astrophysicists, and they said this is when it's going to happen. This is what will happen, and uh, this has probably been gradually happening since World War II. Yeah, the the thing is, is and the reason why I say that is because I had recently discussed with uh, some folks there in Washington. And um, I was talking about things that we're seeing, you know, that I said, you know, they're saying that there's something in behind the sun. And then they made the comment to me, well, that is actually uh, what we're looking at right there is a, um, oh, how did they put it to me, Bonnie? That that was a, uh, a asteroid planet type of um, spaceship. Okay, the only thing that I know of that is described that way is Planet X. Yeah. It is a planet, but it's also an asteroid, and it is considered to be a draconian, basically, we could say a draconian world, but there's some argument that it's artificial, and that's why they call it a spaceship. Um and just like the one, remember the one, Bonnie, that they that that NASA was talking about. They didn't catch it in time, and then it come fl come flying through. They said it was very flat, looked like a cigar, but it was tumbling slowly. But it was moving at like sixteen times faster than an asteroid mm -hmm. um, when it came through our universe there, or, or through our past our Earth and stuff. That we did confirm was a spaceship. Huh. Uh, we, we sent out scouts to, to, to check it out. We knew that it was a spaceship. But, of course, they never told anybody. No. They just let you of believe course. that it's That's right. a flat, yeah. a flat That's rock right. floating through the believe. universe. <clears throat> what about uh, anything from Israel? Have you heard any news from Israel? Yeah, we got we got some things going on. I got a friend of mine that that lives over there that's a journalist and uh and he's always sending me the updates there of of things that are happening and uh and let me just real quick here. One of the things he talked about recently that the artillery corps base in southern Israel was breached and he said unknown persons had broken into the uh Shavetta base uh, down in the Negev, and they stole expensive motorcycle and an ATV, and oh. confiscated by the police. And I mean, we got some really weird things going on, right? So, so the breach was discovered after the IDF soldiers securing the base discovered a huge breach uh, in the perimeter fence and alerted the emergency squad. And after scanning the area, he said it became clear that the unknown persons had cut the base fence and entered uh, entered the vehicle compound area on foot. Uh, and stolen the vehicles, which were confiscated due to the suspicion and criminal activity in the area there. Uh, you always have little crazy things like that that Lior will send to me. And another one was, uh, uh, he said that, uh, that Israel was preparing to paralyze the airports in Syria. 
He said uh, there was a source that Israel is ready to hit the airports of the Syrian regime and paralyze air traffic in order to prevent Iranian cargo planes from freely transferring advanced weapons systems and ammunition from around Iran to various airports in Syria. Uh, he goes on to say that the source emphasized that the goal is to prevent the restoration of full air contact between Syria and Iran because the route is used to transport weapons to both Syrian regime and the Lebanese Hezbollah. And according to the source's report, semi-official talks are taking place confirming that various uh, options are being considered, including launching destructive strikes to paralyze the airports in Syria. Uh, and a Russian source claims that the Israeli bombing of the Damascus airport earlier this year did not paralyze it, but provoke the dis, uh, dissatisfaction of Iranian officials with the Russian response. And then the source claimed that the Israeli attacks on Damascus airport this year led the senior official, officials in Iran to express their complete displeasure with Moscow's reaction, or rather lack of reaction. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I kind of found that find that interesting myself because... Russia has a very, very tight-knit relationship with Israel, and it does supersede their relationship with Iran. Um, and I don't think people get that at all. Well, uh, we are at 26 minutes here, so we're going to have to go. Uh, maybe next week we can talk about Netanyahu. I know that he has um, he's ready to announce a, go a government and what that, that means. That sounds awesome, Bonnie.